Hi there, welcome to this third video on four principles of simple design. Let's look at another example in this video. Let's get started. What we are looking at right now is a piece of code. Uh, I have a method called get grade. Uh, this is the business requirement which it's implementing. It's implementing like the requirement that you are awarded a grade based on your marks. Uh, okay, grade A for a limit, grade B for a limit, and otherwise it's grade C. Uh, except for maths, where the marks to get are actually five higher than required for other subjects. Okay, that's good. So now, uh, if you look at this implementation, like this is the current implementation that we have, it's get grade. And if you look at it, it uses uh, two methods, is grade A and is grade B. Uh, when I look at this implementation, the thing which I see is a lot of logic is duplicated. There is a lot of similarities between is grade A and is grade B methods. Actually, uh, when I look at it and also the other thing is the logic of adding a pi is duplicated a number of places. So here I have 50 plus 55 being uh, present multiple times and 90 plus 5 is 95 that is present multiple times. So let's see if we can give a better implementation to this. As a start, I'll actually uh, inline the method. So, okay, that's not possible because it's using is grade. Let's extract to a local variable. Is grade A. Okay, and now let's see if I can inline. Okay, that's better. And then. Uh, the other thing I would do is same thing for is grade B as well. So it should be A, B grade, and let's inline that as well. So, okay, complex piece of code. I think refactoring here would be a difficult thing. So probably I'll go with the option of trying to write this code. Uh, fresh. I have a set of tests. This is a simple method, not a very complex one. So I have a set of tests which are already running. That's good. So let's go ahead and actually see if I can rewrite the method quickly. So what's actually varying, if you look at this, is actually uh, the marks required for grade for maths are five higher. So can I put that into a variable? So let's start with that concept. Let's say int. Uh, extra marks required. Extra marks required. That's basically is equal to if if it's maths, the extra marks required are five. Otherwise, it's zero, right? That's basically the condition. So, uh, when is it grade B? If uh, marks are mark is greater than. 91 or it's greater than equal to 91 plus extra marks required required so if it's some other subject i would get extra marks zero if it's maths i get i'll return grade a so i think that condition works that's good i think yeah that's perfect and if the next condition would be to check for grade b which is if it's 51 plus the extra mark. So that's grade B. Otherwise, I can return back to grade C. So that's, I think, as simple as it gets. The, I can remove all the complex stuff that we wrote earlier to get the same functionality working. Now let's go to the test and see if it's working. That's good. The test is working. Um, I can further represent the fact that uh, I can extract variables for this five, saying it's the extra limit. Uh, also, like I can extract con sorry extract constants for five, ninety one, and fifty one, representing the appropriate concept. The other thing which is very interesting is to see if I can actually extract this to uh, enum. So, what I can actually do is I can actually extract uh, enum out of it. So I can actually say something of the kind, grade dot A. The A is a grade. So I'll represent the fact very clearly. A is not an alphabet here. A represents a grade. So 
I can represent that very easily and clearly using an enum. So I'll go ahead and actually create an enum. So I'll create a enum called grade. So I'll create it internally here. So let's go ahead and actually add a in the grade. Let's actually move this to the place where we want it. So control X. I'll put it here because this is the only place where it's being used right now. Probably in future it might be used at other places. Uh, I'll probably B and C as well. And the other thing which obviously needs to change is the fact that uh, I have to change the test, uh, the method return type to grade, and I have to change the test to access this return type. But now if you look at this method, actually it's very clear uh, if there is extra marks for maths, other than that the limits for uh, thing are, if anybody gets more than 91, it's A, 51, it's B, else it's C, and there's a concept of extra marks required. Um, if you look at this code, it's really clear and simple to understand. Uh, the thing which is different between the earlier code and this code is it's not the earlier code what is changing is represented in a number of places in here what is changing is represented only once so the most important thing is to talk think in terms of business concepts here uh, the most important business concept i see is the grade are five higher than those required for other subjects so i'll represent that as a variable so if the logic for that is complex, probably I can even extract this to a method and say find extra marks or something of that kind. But here it's simple logic, so I don't need to create an extra method for that. Um, so try to represent what is changing into a variable and then try to write your logic in a simpler way. Okay, that ends our second example on four principles of simple design. Until next time, bye. We are creating more videos as we speak. And if you want to stay updated, don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and feel free to share this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.